Now let's consider a famous essay by Frederick Bastiat on the seen versus the unseen, a classic theme in economic reasoning. This essay comes from 1850, and the title of it is That Which is Seen and That Which is Not Seen. It's available online and free. Bastiat, by the way, was first a judge and a legislator, and then a very important economic journalist. He's a very clear and forceful writer, and he gives some of the classic statements of libertarian arguments for free markets, most of all for free trade. A lot of people still read Bastiat to this day, especially classical liberals and libertarians. Bastiat gives a very famous example of what is called the broken window fallacy. So you can imagine, for instance, that if a boy came along and broke a window in a house, you might think that this creates jobs. After all, someone has to be hired to fix the window. The person hired to fix the window has to buy some glass, has to buy some materials to fix the window, and you might think that this is good for an economy. But Bastiat saw that that analysis was confusing the seen with the unseen. The money spent on fixing the window, had the window not been broken, actually would have gone to other uses and it would have created other jobs and it actually would have been a more productive economy without the broken window and the money being allocated toward other economic activities. And yet we do not see that opportunity cost of the resources that are spent fixing the window, so it looks like fixing the window helps the economy because that is the seen, but the unseen alternatives are simply harder to imagine. By the way, you may be familiar with Keynes's argument that actually destroying economic output can help an economy by stimulating economic activity. This doesn't actually refute Bastiat. There's still a good deal of evidence that even if government spending sometimes helps an economy, it's a bigger boost when the money is spent on productive goods and services rather than on, say, breaking windows. Bastiat considers another example, government support for the fine arts. Everyone can see that government support leads to more opera companies, leads to more open theaters, leads to more concerts and many other activities. But does this mean it's a good thing? Well, that is the scene. Bastiat stresses the opportunity cost, or in this case, the unseen alternatives to having government support the fine arts or other public works. Bastiat doesn't pretend to offer a final comparison here, but he, do, he does note that we as observers were again tending to overvalue what it is we see and to undervalue the opportunity cost, and that there is at least a plausible argument for having the funds be allocated in accord with consumer preferences rather than by, say, the preferences of the taxing authority. Protectionism is another example where many observers confuse the seen and the unseen. For instance, imagine that we put up a tariff and protect some domestic industry. Everyone can see the jobs which are saved. But we do not, what we do not see are the opportunities for trade and the opportunities for productive activity which are closed off by the tariff. So there are other jobs that would have been created or saved without the tariff, but we do not in fact see them. There's a lot of theory and both evidence which suggests that protectionism on net does not contribute to the creation or preservation of jobs. Yet again, precisely because of this confusion between the seen and the unseen, many untutored observers are likely to think that protectionism saves jobs. Bastiat was very good at taking a core principle and applying it to a lot of different examples. So he also talked about machinery. You might think that machines put laborers out of work. And indeed, you will see that many machines do displace many particular laborers. In modern times, for instance, when the automobile comes along, the people who used to drive horses and buggies have lost their jobs. What Bastiat saw is that as machines come along, that generates real income. That real income is spent then on other goods and services. That creates jobs elsewhere in the economy. And you have a reallocation of labor. The individuals who are displaced by machines then go on over time to produce something else. And on average, you would expect the economy to be more productive. This isn't the only possible perspective on this issue, and I would urge you to view our video on the machinery question and David Ricardo. Still, nonetheless, Bastiat made a very clear and forceful case for the notion that the advent of machinery was in the best interests of the economy as a whole and also workers.